Well, thank you CrossFit Games for putting on a free live stream so we can follow the action no matter where we are. That being said, we have a few suggestions. Welcome back to the channel and today I want to talk about the live stream of the CrossFit Games and I suppose by extension just the live stream of CrossFit events in general and I don't want to be hypercritical, I understand a tremendous amount of work goes into putting on the live stream, it's completely free. I've actually had the opportunity to work with the team that put on the live stream when I was at Strength in Depth so I understand how much hard work is going into this. That being said, it is something that matters to a lot of people and as much as we appreciate it, not only is there room for improvement, but there is a definite need for that improvement. Now, notice what Taylor Self had to say on the Savan podcast. Frog, okay, we talked about that. I have one more comment about that and a question please. for you yep, and JR both. Um, I'm wondering if Dave or Boz go back after the year's games and watch the coverage or the documentary uh, in hopes of improving for next year because it's what the layout may look like in the Coliseum is so different than how it's covered to the millions of people who watch it on YouTube, which at the end of the day are potentially more important than the people watching inside the Coliseum. The Coliseum for sure is important. You have to please the fans that are there. Uh, but the millions of viewers that are watching at home, um, it seems like we've been getting the short end of the stick the last few years. Now, I think Taylor raises some very interesting points. Uh, first of all, the online audience is really important. They're far larger than the in-person spectators. They're obviously coming from all around the world. There's also the ability to go back and re-watch after the fact. So even people that may have been in person will probably watch events that they missed online as well. And I don't think improving the online experience detracts from the in-person experience. Actually, some of the suggestions that I've heard, I think would make both experiences better. Now, I don't know whether or not Adrian Bosman has the time to go back and rewatch the live stream, to take notes and make suggestions later on how they could improve things, but I've had a go at doing it for him. I've outsourced actually to people in the community. I've had a lot of responses back. So what I want to do is just put together some of the main points that people have issues with, as well as perhaps a few suggestions on how it could improve. Something else I thought that was interesting that was pointed out to me was that we don't seem to hear too many complaints about the live stream. Or I should say, those that produce content in the CrossFit world that get a lot of traction, we don't hear them complaining so much about the live stream. But could that be because they tend to be there in person, so the live stream isn't an issue for them? Well, don't worry, I'm gonna be here with you on the live stream for many years more, I imagine. So it really is important to me that we get this fixed. So probably the biggest issue that was pointed out to me, and justifiably so, is just the difficulty in following the action on the field. And it makes sense why that would be such a big problem. If you don't know who's who or where they stand in the event, it's really difficult to enjoy what's going on. Now, one of the suggestions has been on-screen graphics, particularly in the swim event, this has been brought up multiple times. People talking about things like the Olympics and the way they use on-screen graphics, and then comparing that to what we had at the CrossFit Games. People have pointed out that actually that's a lot more work than maybe we realize, and it's not so easy to do that. Well, I have faith in CrossFit. If they wanted to do it, I've no doubt they could pull it off. But I would also be happy with an analog solution. And this is where I go back to things that could benefit the in-person audience as well as the live stream. So for example, if you know that people are gonna get out of the pool this way, this is the shot you're going to use, why not have the placards with their names put in a different location, somewhere where it's more visible so we can see it from a wide angle shot, it's quite clear to see which lane is which and who's where. And I don't wanna go after Noble, I feel like I've done that in the past anyway, but identical black swim caps might look cool, but it doesn't help me identify who's who when they're in the water. So simple things like that. And it wasn't just the swim event. Let's go and look at the cycle event. When we had them on the bikes, you've given everyone identical white helmets. Now it wouldn't have been hard to just alternate colors. So at least we could have an idea of maybe in the top three, we've got someone with a red helmet, someone with a blue, someone with a white. It would be easier to follow the action that way. When we look at them all in white and with similar colored jerseys, it's really difficult, particularly from a wide angle shot, to know who's who and how well they're doing. And that isn't just on the bike event or the swim event. 
And in general, Noble's sort of color palette that they choose to use does make it difficult to distinguish different athletes from that wide angle shot when we occasionally get it. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. Now, I understand that Noble have their style, but is that style really the best thing for the games? We can easily identify the person in the leader's jersey because they look so different from everybody else. But maybe more colors, perhaps brighter colors would make it easier to identify athletes from a distance. But of course, it doesn't matter what people wear if the cameras never pointed at them. And that is probably the most egregious offense people have pointed out, that the camera just lingers on the same people all the time. Yes, you've got the event winners, but then you've got CrossFit's favorites, the stars, the storylines they're trying to tell. And it makes sense that particularly like a heat winner, you're gonna want to focus on who's in the lead, and we understand that. But if the person in the lead still has 18 more pig flips to do, we don't need to watch all of them. Pan the camera around. Let us see how well other people are doing. Or even worse, once they've won the heat, why keep the camera lingering on them then? They're probably going to get an interview in a minute anyway. Pan the camera back. Let's see how the other people are doing, how they're finishing up. Yeah, maybe this person is going to finish 29th overall in the event. But we talk about the CrossFit community so much. We love our community. So if an athlete from a local box has done it, they've made it to the games, you know that their friends, their family, the community are going to want to watch them perform. They don't care where they're finishing. They just want to see them. Now, I understand the nature of CrossFit makes it difficult to follow all of the action. And within a split second, the person in the lead can change. But this is where that idea of a wide angle shot would really come in. Why can we not have one camera just dedicated to showing us the entire field? And then you can use picture in picture to show us, you know, the star athletes or the heat winners or the things that you want to focus on. But it allows us to choose for ourselves who we want to focus on. Yeah, maybe it will be a small image. Maybe the picture won't be amazing. It will be challenging to follow, but it would be better than nothing. And that's what we get most of the time. Other suggestions could be with regards to the graphics. We usually see the top five across the screen, maybe six or seven, depending on the event. But we don't get a full heat list. We don't get to see where everybody stands. Maybe that's something that could happen. Or what about when an event finishes? Generally, we're just shown the top 10. What about the other 30 athletes? We want to know. I get that all the scores are unofficial and we can check the app later. But we've seen how long that can take to sort out. Even if it's unofficial, at least we'd have a general idea of how people are doing. Now, if you think that that's not a problem, that maybe I'm exaggerating this, here's a little experiment. Next time you're watching one of these events, play one of the fantasy leagues, fantasy fitnessing or lawn chair leaderboarding. See how often you do not know how someone on your team has done because they've had zero coverage and they haven't even put their score up on the screen at the end of the event. Now, so far, probably I've focused a lot on the elite individuals, but actually these points would work across the board for all the divisions. Many would say that in the team division, you see the focusing on the favorites more than anywhere else. Obviously, you've got Rich Froning and the Mayhem team, and they tend to get probably more screen time than all the other teams combined. Now, another criticism that I received a lot was with regards to the commentary. And again, I don't want to pick holes and I understand that it is a really tough job for them. Another thing to remember is that often they can only see what we can see, which is another reason why the live stream is so important or why being able to identify athletes easily is so important. Because one of the biggest mistakes that we see that really is unforgivable, I guess, is getting athletes names wrong. You've got 40 men and 40 women in the elite individuals. You should know all of their names. But sometimes that is just going to be an honest mistake because it's hard to identify them. Again, perhaps a brighter colored shirt, knowing that this athlete is wearing a blue shirt and that other athlete is wearing a red shirt. It's going to be a lot more difficult to mix them up. Or the fact that the camera chooses to stay on the same people nearly every event for so long means that the commentators just run out of things to say about them. If the camera panned around more, if we saw the athletes that were, you know, not doing as well, but at least we'd learn something about them as long as they've done their homework. And this is another problem. Some of the analysts and commentators could tell you something about any athlete you chose to point the camera at. But that does show up those that maybe haven't done their homework. But moving on from that, another thing that was pointed out was it was incredible to get to see the age group divisions and the adaptive divisions on the stream. But we just want more of that. 
it, it would be nice if more of the events could be streamed. If all of the events could be streamed, that would be amazing, maybe on a, a separate feed. Again, we're not asking for perfection. You know, I'd be happy with a single camera shot of the whole field just so I can see it if I want to. And I understand that, you know, the elites are the ones that bring in the eyeballs and bring in the sponsorship and so on and so forth. And that does make sense. But when we think about how hard it is to qualify for the games, how much it costs the athletes to travel there, to participate, to sign up in the first place, they deserve their time on the stream. And maybe one final thing for this video, which is less about the stream itself and maybe more about the stream experience, particularly if you're watching it on YouTube, would be the live comment section. Bots, trolls and spam. That's kind of what we get there. So maybe a better job of just moderating that. It's quite hard when you get to see the community gathered together, cheering on Rebecca Fusier as she makes it up the steps of the Capitol. But at the same time, you've just got people calling out Ricky Garrard for being a cheat because we didn't see on the live stream him doing all five laps on the bike. And it just contrasts, you know, this wonderful in-person experience with just the trolls that we find on the stream as well. So if they could do a better job of moderating that, particularly the spam uh, that was getting a little bit frustrating, you know, I'd like that personally as somebody who likes to jump in on the comments and share my thoughts and feelings with other people that are like minded not with people that just want to post up nonsense. Well, there we have it. Maybe this is just like a part one of the stream. I've probably forgotten a million things that people told me. So if there is something that you feel really needs to be improved on the stream or something you think would make the experience better in person or on the stream, please leave it in the comments and maybe we can do a part two of more suggestions on how we can make it a better experience for all. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in a future video.